stickers. Okay, I don't know what this is. There's a label come up. Peter? I have... Oh, I think oh, it, it just, just says, says you agree recorded. to be recorded. Okay, thank you. Now you can start. Now and can you want to showcase her? Uh, I want to... Um, yeah, when she gets ready. Okay. I want to share, and this is what I want to share. Now what do I do? Right, let's get the first one going. Right, I'm going to share with you, and I hope I'm going to do this correctly. Please bear with me, because I can't see what I'm doing. So can everyone see that picture? We can see your little um, we see all files. Pictures. files. We can see your files now. Right, so somewhere or other, I have to press something else. What do you want? I want to share that now. You have to click on the picture you want to show. Yes, I'm on one now. Yeah. And I want to say share. Stop sharing. You no. are, you are screen sharing. So I'm you are screen, screen sharing. sharing so now. just click on that number one. Click on, click on that. Yes, just click on yeah. it in the middle. Yeah. yeah. Can you see it now? No. No. Oh dear, I have got screen share on here. It's no. on. Oh, do I have to ask permission? Perhaps I haven't had permission to share. I don't know. No. Oh, you do. Oh, you she does? Oh, it's you sharing your desktop, but you need to open one Person. of those pictures Person. so it I shows. Open. Oh, have you know what? Then you have to. Oh, okay. You've got to go to the share button down at the bottom. Uh, right and it's yes, in green i am sharing i think you have to share each time you sh uh, change pictures and right well, now all we see is your desktop with all the pictures this worked perfectly this afternoon i've had a try right um, okay at the bottom right of the white box, there should be a share. Yes, I pressed that earlier. I'll stop it and start again just in case. Right, the red one is it, Peter, or yes. the green one? Yes, you have red to red stop, stop the red one. You have to click I've on the red sharing one. sharing now, and I'll go back again and, and share again. Except you're still sharing. Oh, God. I said stop sharing. It seems to be working an independent program that no one else can see. Marcia, did you spotlight her? No, not yet. Oh, okay. It, I just it wondered will be if that would screen. affect the... Marcia, if you thing. don't spotlight her, this won't show up in the recording. Well, it will, but it will be so tiny. Okay, uh, Peter and Rusty, look at the bottom of the white screen, the bottom right, and yeah. there's a share button. I think it's green. Yes, I thought it was too, but it isn't. Really. So click on one of the oh, photos and share. You are screen sharing. It says I am screen sharing. And also, there's another one that says stop. No, no I don't. New, new share. New share. Where's that? Where's new share? There, now. Right, and now you, this is where you were. Hmm. You have to stop and then open now, your... Right. Can you see anything now? Again. Can you see anything now? Okay, Rusty, go stop. up to the top to the red button and stop share and start over again. Yeah. Stop share. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now, now hit down to share the bottom screen. Down screen. center. Yes. Down at the bottom. Share go screen. Go. And choose this one I want to share. Yes. That's that one. Yes. And that's, that's no. that one. You How need to choose that first before you yeah. get to your screen. Yeah, yes, click on that up. one. No, it's before. all up. And it's not working. You're not listening to me. Okay, you have to stop sharing. Stop okay. sharing again. Right, I'll Head stop button. sharing. Stop yes. sharing. Now, click on that number one picture until it comes up on your screen. Now hit share screen. Oh, oh, Hang on, oh, I oh, haven't oh. got, I've got to re reopen my box of goodies. Right there. there? Yeah. 
right? And I'm clicking on number one screen now. I have clicked on it. Okay, now share, hit the green share screen button again. At the bottom. It isn't at the bottom. Let me move everything. The bottom up. right. It's in the middle on mine, Marcia. In the middle on mine, too. Yeah, it's well, middle last on mine night when here. we did this, it was at the right, I think. Oh. I don't think so. Not on a computer. But it's the only green button there. It's the only green button. Yeah. Let's make this smaller. Let's make this smaller. Perhaps a little bit. Oh, what the dickens. Sorry. I'm sorry, girls. Uh, Somebody else had better go first while I try and work this out. I don't know what's happening. Oh. You won't be able to work it out unless you're on turn, having a turn. Take your time, Rusty. We can wait. Yep, yeah. We're good. Don't, don't worry. Share screen is there. Right, share screen. This is the first picture. Now, is that? Oh, true? there you yes. go. Yes. There I don't know what I did that was different. Yeah. Right. When I started doing those houses, they were all 12th scale. Houses were small. You didn't get any gardens or any hard landscaping around the outside. You just got your house and were grateful for it. But I liked scenes. And this I made from a box that held a Coburn's port, a very fancy box. A present a presentation one friend gave me. Take that away, Dan. Um, it's a Dickensian alleyway, and I think it will make quite a nice book nook. I live in an area which was Dickensian. People, I've been in the buildings he walked in. I've walked in his footsteps. I've been down to the marshes where Magwitch hid out before he escaped. I really know about Dickens. I've eaten my lunch in the leather bottle, which is where he based his quick papers. So this, to me, is my little tribute to Charles Dickens. But it will do just as well if you want to do it as a, the edge of a fishing shack or a tree house. And all it's made is, with, is little bits of strip wood, cardboard, a paint effect for the crumbling things at the back. And the big mistake I made was I found a green bulb and I wanted to light up a sewer underneath. And I put it in there very well and I made all sorts of little bits of debris, uh, yes, the debris, including a rat. Oh, <laughs> then I then I filled it all up with two part resin, and of course it lifted all the detritus and it covered the bulb. So you can't see that there is green bulb working in there somewhere, but mm -hmm. it's just a an idea of things you can do. That is just bits of card, bits of strip wood, broken bits of wood, and it makes a scene that is. Dickensian in my mind, and I can see in my mind's eye that there's a, 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 oh, what, all right, and I'm trying to work. There's Bill Sykes is coming out of there with these. That's dogs. very Jacob's Island, that. Yeah? yeah, I think so. Right. Well, you can use that. Now, um, this is just to show you paint effects. This was the church as near as I can do it to where Peter and I married. And if you have a look, the wall and the church are all just paint dabbled on. Start with the lightest one, and I worked up to the darkest one. And I, with, because it was all painted light colours, I covered the pieces that will go on the sides and then dabbed the paint over everything else. So this shows up as coins with the lighter brick, just as the house uh, just as the church did have right let's go on that one. and this will show you the paving inside the layout it's just gravel from birds I, I got it in an aquarium in an aquarium shop a pet shop and this was budgie grit very fine stuff and I put glue down 
and then sprinkled this badger grit on it. I tried to get some more later and they had something called crushed oyster shell, but as far as I could see, it's horrible and it was all dust. So they don't like you opening the packets to see exactly what's in them. So I don't recommend it. But if you look for aquarium grit or badger grit, if you want to do paths, it's ideal. Thank you, Danny. Can you do the next one then, please? <laughs> right. Um, walls, even in the garden, you can use printed paper. And this is quite a good one. I looked it up to see if I could give you the reference. And unfortunately, they've stopped doing it. They always do when I find something good. Okay. But it, this shows to show how you can just use ordinary paper, printed paper, and add to it with you could use a print in the garden with an ornament on it or you could just do coping it's only card and anybody's got it and can use it this was the flat where my husband and i did when we first got married and the room behind which you just can't see this is the lounge behind that was the bedroom where my daughter was born so right next thing another way of doing walls in gardens or anywhere is to use your own homemade bricks. But this is a, a it's only Kellogg's Corn Flakes packets. And I thank Mr. Kellogg very much for his card. I use it a lot. This is just colour dabbled on, brick colour all over a sheet of card. It's cut down vertically the width of the brick and then glued to some quite off-white paper, not too stark white, and that's recycled paper that the flyers, they put through my door and I save those as well. wonder we can get in this house really. It's then shuffled and joined in vertical columns. Once that's dried, it's cut horizontally and those are then glued down on a another sheet of this recycled paper and moved half a brick along and glued down. The next one goes back, half a brick, half a brick, and you end up, can you, that's it. Can you go into the next one, please, Danny? And that's what you end up with. This little house is an antique shop and oh, a good few years ago, there was a spate of magazines selling you bit parts from that dolls houses you could get the furniture you could get bits of the building but it went on and on it started with something like 99 pence for the first copy then it went on every week and it got more and more expensive and there was about a hundred issues before wow. you had the house and the but you know they'd gone up to about three pounds by then and it was going to be a terribly expensive dolls house and so many people lost heart and gave up very soon but it meant there was all these little bits of doll's house floating around and they all managed to find their way to me so i made a house out of it just card and the fitments but it's uh, with the paper brick on it as well it's come up quite well i'm quite pleased with that one and it's got all those little bits that aren't really for doll's houses but they're little things you've collected over the i've collected over the years next one down please Another thing I like to use for the flooring, I have the manual version of a cricket machine and I have one punch which is for trellis for going on card, but the holes in the trellis are more interesting to me than the actual trellis because that's the shape of them and it makes a perfectly good floor for something like this. And I wanted to show off some dolls, I wanted to display to show off these little dolls, which came as a hair slide. They're, they come from Peru and they work out at something ridiculous, like 50 pence or less each. Somebody's gone and worked hard to make all of those. But anyway, it's just a three-sided thing, a base and one side left, one and at the back, and they fit in Ferrero Rocher boxes. I don't think you have the same size ones in the U in America that we have in the UK. They are two and a half inches high, two and a half inches deep, and five inches long. And it's an ideal height and size for showing off a scene in 
quarter scale. Right, Danny, next one, please. It'll be fairly quick because the lady's waiting. Right, this is uh, another of my penny pinching. It's a castle, and that is the basic makings. It's a Pringles box. I had to suffer and eat those, I'm afraid. And a kitchen roll and a toilet roll. Two toilet rolls, actually, and egg boxes. Right, next one, Danny, please. And this is what I made of them. I cut out the arches, but and I want also to cut down the side to make little rooms. But because I know that these will have an instinct to spring open, I wired them, leaving gaps where I was going to cut. So they have horizontal wires going around them, and they were covered with paper, first of all, to, so it wasn't so obvious. Next one, please, Danny. And this is what the result is. This is just egg boxes. I ran some lights down in that groove where the two circles join. I, you can see it's just got a, a shallow valley because I went to the pound shop after Christmas, of course, and bought some of their Christmas lights, which are half price. So they're 50 pence for 10 lights, which is quite handy. And then I covered that with a mash made of the old egg boxes, any off cuts, soaked it, left it until it, oh, a little tiny drop of washing up water so it absorbs more easily. When it was really soggy, I squeezed it out, mashed it up with a little bit of white glue. And that gave me a putty that I could fill the, the, in the creases first and then put in the bricks. I dry brush them, I've painted them first with the darker of the greys and then dry brush them with two others going progressively lighter. The tiles you can see, they're also made from egg boxes, just paint. Uh, and uh, I, oh yes, I also used a cornflakes packet as well to get any smaller places where you see it's slightly thin out there. Right, next one please, darling. And I put this, oh, I've missed one. There's one missing. Go yes, go that one, see. No, oh, there it is. This is little do. The bottom, can you go back smaller? The bottom of this is my other favorite building thing, which is the expanded polystyrene that goes in boxes that contain television sets or anything electrical. They all seem to be embedded in polystyrene blocks. And it's marvellous for doll's house making. I use it a lot. You can see the height. And so that it wasn't so obvious and smoothed out some of the wrinkles, I covered it with tissue paper, glued down with white glue. Okay, well, I'm going to the next one. Oh, in case, sorry, Diane. Yeah. The, um, the edge of the, the base was what was around uh, backing paper for some, I think, mini etches or something. It gave me a nice bit of, block board or something to protect the things they sent me. I used that for the base and the border around the edge was the stick of a rocket one bonfire night which had landed in my front garden. I'm very grateful for the aerial delivery of that. It's very handy. Right, next one, darling, please. I painted once it was all dry. You can see that the rock work was just dry brushed as everything else was. Um, everything is built from egg boxes or bits of card. There's nothing, no wood, no nothing. But in this enlarged version, you can just see where it's slightly raised where I've wired it so that I can then cut out doors, sides. Go back one, darling. Back one frame, please. If you then close up on this, and you can see where I cut. Can you highlight that? Yeah. yeah. You can see where I cut the rooms, but they just fit in and come out again when I want to show. Can you go on to now? This is where I decided it needed a moat around it. And so that's <laughs> just the polystyrene is removed from there. That's cute. I close it. Hello, you all right? <coughs> 
scrubbed the edges with tissue paper again. The water is a couple of layers of triple thick. Okay, darling. <coughs> just put that in because I like it. Okay, darling. Not for saying. Well, it, it's just more views of the same thing, really. And that is the finished article. Thank you. And that's all with egg boxes and kitchen rolls and Pringles and anything else that was contributed free of charge. Right, darling, the dearest thing in that was the lights at 50 pence or 50 cents, same thing, really. This one is at the Acorn House. I think you've seen, you all probably done an Acorn House somewhere, quarter scale again. And you can see the polystyrene there expanded polystyrene it's very handy if you want to make steps because you can just push your pieces of wood in glue the edge they'll stay where you put them because you've made the little groove by pushing them in the only thing i would say if you are going to wire your lights with shrink wrap and put shrink wrap around it using a heat gun don't point it come down, come down. don't point it at the house because where it was a witch's outside parking for broomsticks has now become a hollow cave, trolls underground parking only. I've had to make a new label where I melted a big hole in it. Right, Dan, can you go on one? Um, this is just a close-up showing you how effective the bricks are. Uh, no, the other side. Can you move it? No. no. Can you go this way? Oh, never mind, Dan. Don't worry. Oh, you'll probably better. Okay, carry on. <laughs> Next <laughs> one, please. Now. Yes, I can't do that either. But anyway, it just gives you a sight of seeing what's going on. Oh, really? It can also be pebbles in the bottom of the other water scene. I just like that bit of crab that turned out quite well. That's just Fimo and a shell and some beads. Oh, those are real pebbles? Yeah, no, the, the that's a real shell, but the pebbles... I just picked off pieces of polystyrene, the, the same and uh, packing which I always have. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Um, down it a bit, darling. Can you make it take it down? No, reduce the size a bit. That's better. If you go on one, I'll show you. And it's marvelous stuff for anchoring. If you, when you go onto your uh, putting trees and bushes and things, can you go on one, please, darling? And this, you can go up a bit bigger on that. You can see all of this is quite heavy stuff because it's quite large, but it's anchored very well in the polystyrene. A bit of glue on the end before you push it in. And if you want to add smaller flowers with weaker stems, make a hole with a pin or a needle or something like that. Okay, darling, perhaps you'd like to. Right, and you can see, uh, can you stop doing that? Um, <laughs> it's got... Um, this is ideal for walls. It's the same polystyrene, but I did add some paper clay to smooth some of the bits out and make it look less bitty, less pebbly. Uh, this was a, a, again in the egg box, uh, in a Ferrero Rocher box that I love so much. That's uh, a scene from Alice in Wonderland, obviously. If I make things now, I tend to use paper clay. And I have, this is one I started, it's a mix. When I just started using paper clay, this is 144th scale. And I said, go on one more, darling. Can you? I found the paper clay, which was my start, was making a mold and from a button and then making little things. I used it for the accoutrements, the etcetera's. Go on one, darling, please. And this was a scene I was making. Most of it's just card, but the embellishments are all paper clay. Go on, one more, darling. And this was a scene, as you can see, that I built up and you can see the lions and everything else. They're just bits of paper clay, using it for embellishments. Go on, one more, love, please. Uh, this is the final item. It's a scene from the book. You're going to expand on Leonardo da Vinci. They, the Italian television brought out a lovely series of the life of Leonardo. And I was so fascinated by the buildings 
that that's what made me make this. They did have somebody hanging in the middle of there. I didn't put that in. Um, but um, this is just, in again, in one of these Ferrero Rocher boxes. It's 144th scale. Right, on one, darling, please. Now, when I wanted to make bigger things and started really going into using paper clay, I used to make it far too thick. And its tendency, because it retains moisture, it would warp things. And it takes forever to dry and it tends to crack a lot more. But I found the best way now is I have something like a Ziploc bag, a large one, put a ball of clay in it, roll it until it's almost thin enough to see through, and then just tear out the sections I want. But to get the height, I now build up, as you can see, with card. Right, next one, please, darling. And this is what I do in sections, using a section at a time. I paint white glue on first before I lay this thin sheet and then do the impressing. It doesn't show you can do the join quite well. It doesn't show you do it in bits, but it's more manageable to do it that way. And it takes quite a little bit, and you can see quite a lot of impression on it. It's not thick. It looks thick, but it isn't. And it shows up quite well every mark. Okay, darling, next one, please. Thank you, sir. Next one, please. And this is a finish. That's it. Beautiful. Right. Awesome. You can see, it, this is all just paper clay. Now, I'll show you, I hope, next. Can next. You go next one, please, there. <laughs> this was when I first started. They were, the only clay I could get was something called DAS, which is a, an air dry clay, but it's a very much thicker, less, you, you can't use it for fine molding. <coughs> and I did it far too thick. But what I did was to try and do quarter scale bricks, and it drives you crazy. I measured down the side, put little pin marks both sides, and then got a steel rule and impressed along. And then I used a piece of credit card, which I cut to the vertical grout in a uh, vertical plaster, and just went down with the ruler. And be very careful if you're using a ruler, because it will show up otherwise. A strip of paper is probably better better but i i don't recommend trying to do it quarter scale it really does make your eyes go funny after a while the little <laughs> circle there is is the, can you show it there? the little circle is the on off switch the out building is where i house the batteries yeah on one down please and this is what it was i i can you can see from the edge at the top here how thick the clay was and it, it never fitted properly but you know because it was my first one and I bought it petite, petite properties I quite like it and I'm, I'll not get rid of that one sentimental reason mm -hmm. you learn by your mistakes next one please darling. you don't have to do brickwork you can just imply brickwork and this was a an impress mold thing that you use for clay to make tiles, um, this is herringbone tiles, but I just put a little bit of white paint on it and just pushed it along. It gives the impression that it's tiles, uh, that it's brick, but it isn't. This is based on a village where my family lives since 1602 of Cranbrook in Kent, and it's most of the houses are brick and there's ship lap. Ship lap. <coughs> I thought it needed something, so I made some wisteria, and I made that for flower soft and thin wire. Next one, please, darling. Now, this will show you more of my mistakes, but how thick it was. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's also showing on the floor. This is the impress mould, which I used on the previous one for the brickwork there. But it covers a multitude of sins. The last one you saw was 144 scale. This is 12 scale. And yet neither of them look particularly out of place. Unless you're a purist and really want to be accurate, which I'm not. I just want to convey the impression. But you can see. Now, this is a genius husband of mine. 
and he made this. I managed to work out, we built an extension on my 12 scale doll's house, and I just managed to have enough plywood left over to make this fold up box. It folds up all four sides, and the, if you, there's a lid which forms the missing portion down in the front. <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah. You're right, Talking too much. Yeah, you want a drink? No. Thank you, Dan. Now, just although it's not really hard landscaping, the, the earth there is tea leaves. I dried them very well and put them in a bag and rolled them so that they crumbled a bit more. Painted the area I wanted to earth, brown, slightly darker than the tea leaves themselves. When it's dry, covered it in white glue, sprinkled the tea leaves on, left it to dry, and afterwards tipped it onto a sheet of paper and put that back in the bag for reuse somewhere else. All right, move on one, please, Danny. I'm trying to be quick because I know somebody else wants to talk after me. The, um, the edge of this little stream is purely bits of odds and ends I had and the bits I picked off this polystyrene, three coats of triple thick, sandwiched in between two of the coats, are little bits of flower soft to look like weed growing at the edge of the pond. Again, there's the wood idea for the jetty. Oh. But go on quickly, darling. There you go. Lovely. And if you want hard landscaping, you can't get much harder than ch bone china. And this was on one of the um, face home pages, I think, from one of the miniature one, uh, micro minis. And uh, that's only, you can go really hard landscaping by putting teacups and saucers and the little 144th men are happily climbing Mount Teacup. And that also fits in one of my 144th scale. Right, girls, I hope, I'm sorry about the delay, but I hope that any questions I'm happy to answer. Amazing, amazing what you said. Beautiful, said. Rusty. So, because, Rusty, when you talk about paper clay, yeah, what do you mean by paper clay? I mean, just like a um, it's air dry clay, but it has oh, tiny, air dry clay. Okay, tiny little filaments in it. Um, I think Effa do a, a company called Effa. I think they took over from Das. Das was the original, and it's air dry clay. But this has got tiny little strengthening bits and it doesn't tend to shrink or break quite so easily. This is just a modern development and we've also brought out a very lightweight one that you can dry in the microwave. I haven't tried microwaving it, but it does make lovely food and things and it's very lightweight. I don't know. Well, rusty, you're rusty. I, I'm just fascinated by your dolls, your people that you have in your 144s. How do you manage to make those teeny tiny one half inch tall dolls? Really? I, I just like making them. It's a pleasure. It's not hard work. Well, it was. I can't well, that told me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Bobby. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Hope I didn't take too long holding you all up. That was fabulous. Thank you. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Rusty. Very Thank you, Rusty. Great. Yeah. I appreciate all your efforts. I'm to do happy that. to help anybody who has any queries later. And I, if you want to know how to make bricks in uh, from Kellogg's package, I'll, I'll do that. Too. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I'm Ikey. I don't spend a lot of money. But I have more pleasure making the things myself. Yeah. You, you said, Rusty, you said you had like a mold to make the bricks. Where yes, did you get the it, mold from? It's an impress mold. I got it online. I, I will try and get my daughter to not being able to see it. So frustrating. I was going to look all these things up for you earlier, but of course I couldn't. And I couldn't find where I hid it either. It's just like a rubber stamp. <laughs> Suzanne and Andrew used to make molds. <laughs> Um, and I don't know, I mean, I know they're, they've retired, but I don't know if they've passed along their molds to anyone else to sell. But 
a mold. I would be glad say, to find out because they were what they were wonderful. It isn't a mold you actually put the clay in. You roll out your clay and then you stamp it with this, and it, you have to join. Uh, okay where they come you, you join them so it's more of a in. stamp than a mold it's more of a stamp. yeah okay well i'm going to show you what you can do with a mold which i couldn't find <laughs> well a stamp sounds a lot easier than a mold actually it's not bad actually it works quite well as you can see i like that herringbone one i had a brick one yeah well, it, I like laura that. it depends on what you're using it for what, which would work better, and, and I'll explain more in a minute. What I did okay. like was the fact that I could use it as a rubber stamp if I was careful not to put too much paint on it, and they did that little Cranbrook place as well. Thank Laura, you. there would be more about paper clay later on. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay, Rusty, thank you so much. My pleasure. Elaine. Yes, um, I was not clever enough to do pictures. So we're going to have to do the real thing. But if you can, I guess, spotlight or pin uh -huh. or whatever the heck it's called. Now, this is quarter scale. And I've shown this before for other things. This was a class by Suzanne and Andrew. I've not done a ton of landscaping. I'd like to do a lot more trying to get it in better focus. But what I wanted to talk to you about, well, two things. So we've talked about grass before and I'm pretty sure other people have said this, but I don't remember. If you paint the area, you're gonna put the grass on, the color of the grass, it works much, much better. And so I paint it, then I put a thin layer of blue and then the glass, the grass. I'm sorry, I can't talk. What I wanted to talk to you about were the walls. So Suzanne provided us with these rubber molds, which I was going to show you, and I cannot find it for the life of me. So maybe next month I'll have the mold to show. But be because of the depth of this wall, even though this is quarter scale, that wall is half an inch thick, the stamp thing would not work that, that Rusty was talking about. So in this, you actually fill the mold with the paper clay and let it dry just a little. And then you turn out the mold and then you can, while it's still not completely dry because it air dries, you can shape it. So we, we made like the curves and the indents and the, you know, all the shapes. Uh, there's a little bit thinner piece on the side and then it goes all the way around the back. And once you've had it shaped the way you want it, you let it thoroughly dry <coughs> and then you paint it. Um, we did it with, uh, I want to say four different shades of grays and browns, a lot of dry brushing, a lot of little dabs so that you got the, the feeling for stone. And it was a lot of fun to do is all I can tell you. Um, the paths, you can kind of see that there's steps here and there's, man, I can't get the light right. I'll try again. There's a path there and that's just uh, a fine sand. So you would lay down glue where you want the path to go, sprinkle it with sand, let it dry, turn it upside down, let all the sand that didn't stick go away and you end up with little paths. Um, the step was the same idea, just a little bit of the paper clay cut away from the rest of the wall and set in this whole um, terrace, the, the double terrace is styrofoam. So it's a wood base and then two layers of styrofoam to make the terracing. And those were cut shaped grass put on them and then the stone wall around them. And that's basically what we did. There's also a pond, but we'll talk about that another time. And trees and all kinds of other fun stuff. But again, in keeping with today's theme, that's the wall. Oh, very nice. 
Any questions? Okay, thank you. Um, Melanie, you're, you said you've got something, uh, what is it? Sound mute? Yeah, I'm getting muted. Yeah, sound muted. Down the bottom. You're on mute, Melanie. You're on a PC. Go down. Yeah, the Melanie, you're you're board. there you go. I wasn't saying anything. I was just holding it up, but this is an impressed mold as far as I know. Yes, it's, it's bigger than I have. I have just have a stamp. But yes, that's a, a good impressed mold. You can make bricks. I, I just figured out how to use this, thanks to you guys. <laughs> I was trying to put the play in it. It didn't work like that. No. I don't know what I've done with mine. I have to find it. Okay. Um... Barbara, egg carton masonry. Oh, remember I told you to take me off of there. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Cheryl, are you here? I am here. <laughs> All right. Okay, what I'm going to do is clear my desk, but I'm going to log in um, a second time so you can actually see my desktop. So, um, yeah, that's fine. Oh, Actually, okay. if you want to do somebody else um, first, and I'll get set up. That is good. That's clever. I like that. Look, now the camera on there. Isn't that good? I fancy that. Marsha, I'm, I'm, I'm here and ready to go if you'd like. Okay, to good. I was just looking. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, ladies. I'm Diane Scott, and I'm along with Marsha and Cheryl, members of the Eugene Miniature Club. And I kind of specialize in paper clay, so I'm going to be showing you some of my projects that I've done. Uh, some of them are relatively new, and some of them are a little older, but... There's some different paper clay techniques. To start you off, people were asking questions about paper clay. Uh, the product I use is this thing called Creative Paper Clay. And it comes in different size packages that you can purchase. It's an air dry clay. And um, I just love it. It's like using real clay, except that you don't have to fire it in a kiln, of course. And I use it for all kinds of things, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Uh, just to get started, here's um, a quarter scale um, chimney that I'm working on, which is a combination of brick and rock. And what, I do, what I do for it, it, it was started off as just a, it, it's uh, a kit from Debbie Young, actually. And uh, this is a, uh, you know, it was just a piece of wood and I've covered it with a little bit of uh, Elmer's glue and then a thin layer of paper clay, which I rolled out with a rolling pin. And then I make the bricks using a credit card, uh -huh. not a mold, so that uh, you can make them irregular. And the stones are just little balled up pieces of paper clay that I just stick in. And then of course you go back and paint it. Mm -hmm. One trick is to paint the grout first. So you have that all painted and then go, I go back and paint the bricks, all kinds of different colors. So you'll see this technique in a lot of the things I'm about to show you. Okay, any questions? <laughs> okay, so far so good. Um, since we're, well, let's see, we'll do the oldest first. Here's another example. Whoa, I don't know where my camera is. Here's another example of paper clay. Oh, uh, and we have, um, let me pull it back a little bit here. So the wall is like a stucco wall and it's just paper clay. And then I take a very stiff brush and pounce it against the paper clay to make, uh, make it look like stucco. The little tiles up here at the, at the uh, top are also made out of paper clay. And I just rolled that out, cut them and then painted them and glossed them over. 
The adobe brick over here is uh, a little different because it doesn't have any grout in it because that's the nature of adobe. Usually they don't use um, grout. And then the tiles leading up to the door are also the same way. But all of this is done with paper clay. Let me show you the other side. Here we go. So all of this is made with paper clay, including the little pots at the top. <laughs> Very nice. Any questions? And the uh, tiles at the top are made out of egg cartons, which uh, Cheryl's going to tell you a little bit about made using egg cartons. How do you do the pots out of paper clay? I'm sorry, I didn't get the question. How do you do the pots out of paper clay? Well, it'd be like just molding any kind of a pot. Um, oh, okay. I, they're just hand, they're just like, I mean, start with a blob and then I just keep, you can eat, do it one of two ways. You can mold it while the clay is wet or you could actually let the clay, a blob of clay dry and go back and carve it. Which is one of the really nice things about using an air dry clay is that you have really two mo two ways that you can approach it. One is to do it while it's wet, which is more of a molding um, kind of technique. And the other is more of a sculpting where you're cutting afterwards. And you can re-wet it, so you can reuse it. And you, and you can, well, once it dries, you can sort of moisten the surface. You can't completely re-wet it. it where you can mold with it again. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. Did you put the paper clay on a base of some kind? I mean, is there something God. behind that mm -hmm. wall, like wood or anything? I held it in my hand. Just plain yeah. paper clay. Yeah. You, did. you yeah. glued it on, didn't you? On something didn't you have a cardboard? That's base what I'm on asking. It? Is it glued on to some kind of a cardboard? It, a structure, like. Um, glued on to foam core, plywood. Or the wall. Oh, oh, the wall. Well, there's, let me go back. So here we go. <laughs> so okay. there's a little shelf sitting here. And it means the wall. The, the wall. The, the, the wall. wall. So, so the wall, there was, there's a, um, a piece of, um, what do you call it? Gator board underneath this wall. Yeah. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Yeah. yeah. Or if you just use a slab of paper clay. No. No, you don't really need yeah. some kind of structure for it. And one of the things you'll mm -hmm. notice here is that there's a big crack. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that people either love or hate about paper clay is that when it's drying, it will shrink a bit and cracks develop. Now, some people don't like the cracks, which case after it dries, you can go back and just fill them in. And uh I like them. I think they add a lot of character to the piece. So things on the building, it fits beautifully there, but it wouldn't on a modern building or something. But on everything, you're absolutely right about that. This is more of a this is more of a garden setting with uh, using paper clay. It's a Japanese garden. Let me stand up a little bit here so I can tilt this correctly for you. And it has um, a fish pond in it. Oh, One nice. of the things. So the interesting thing about this particular thing, I mean, there's a lot of rocks and that sort of thing, which are done with paper clay. But the interesting part is, whoa, is the roof. The roof is made out of paper clay bamboo. Oh my. Ooh. Yeah. So what I did was I just rolled very thin little strips of paper clay into like rounds carve out after dried carved out the ends of it and also carved in a little bit of a notch to make it look like bamboo yeah so that there it's also in the water drip system as you can see there where it's i don't know if you've ever seen these little water dripping things i'm sorry i can never figure out where my camera is here on this thing so that's also made out of paper clay as it are the rocks and then there's more bamboo in the back. Great bamboo. Yeah. Really nice. Good. Yeah. Okay. And that's a one inch scale project. This is a, a quarter scale project. Um, and those of you um, who might recognize, some of you these might recognize this as a pattern from a name day convention. 
And what I did was I turned it, it was supposed to be uh, summer, winter, spring, fall, all seasons. I turned mine into a teapot and the handle and the spout are all made out of paper clay. Well, actually pretty much everything is made out of paper clay, the steps, the grounds, uh, the wall around it. I'll turn it slowly and hopefully I can do it fairly smoothly here. Um, yeah, and then we have a little patio sitting out here. And a little terraced floral area. And um, underneath the, let's see if I can, here I am standing on tiptoe as though that's gonna make a difference for you guys. We have an old cobblestone kind of brick underneath the oh, uh, nice. little patio yes. piece. That actually was not a name day project. It was a uh, based on a pattern from a centerpieces from a Portland house party. That's exactly it. Thank you. I'm, I'm yeah, I'm in a name project, not a name day project. I said right. that wrong. Sorry. <laughs> Diane, may I ask a question? Certainly. On that one, it's Pat. On that one is under your, your base round wall. Is there anything under there to mold the paper clay on or is it solid paper? Clay? Um, it was just a, um, a p if there's a piece of wood underneath there. Okay, but on, on the walls where your fingers are? Yeah, your thumb. Is no, that I just don't, no, no. It's just it's just paper clay. And the stairs as well. And the stairs as well. Yeah. And did you, did you sort of put them in and then carve them out once they were while they were wet or? Well, you, it won't collapse or anything like that, right. especially quarter scale. So no, I just um, well, there's underneath all of this, there's um, little scraps of uh, foam core, you know, when you cut oh, okay. stuff out, you always have scraps. So I used it, I like to make my pieces fairly <laughs> elevated. So right. I put uh, some scraps underneath that to give me a little height up to the teapot. And uh, then I just put the paper clay up it, uh, including the steps and whatever. No, I just, just free form. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then of course it's painted afterwards. One of the things, let me go back to here. One of the things I like about paper clay is if, if you can paint it to look like stone or uh, rock or bricks or whatever, but you can also paint it to look like something fairly finished like china, um, like these spouts are. I don't know if you, how well you can see those. They actually have floral patterns painted into them. So you can sand it down and really smooth it out to do that sort of thing. And no, the mouse is not paper clay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that good. <laughs> um, this piece is a club project that we did in Yuma Jean Miniatures Club. It's actually made out of some cardboard boxes stacked on top of one another. And we have stucco with um, actually balsa wood uh, inserted into it. Uh, I used lead strips for it to make the windows. And um, then it has quite a bit of brick on the sides, if you can see that. Now the, again, this was not doing a mold. I used um, a credit card and a ruler and a pencil. So one of the things you can do on paper clay is you can actually draw onto it. So I used a ruler and I made the straight lines and then went back over those with the edge of a credit card. So you take the credit card and you cut it to the width and length of the brick and then just push in just a little bit. And the width of the credit card will make sure that your bricks are, um, you know, relatively the same size. Oh, good idea, yeah. Yeah, I must admit that I got that from uh, the master of paper clay, which Rick Pierce, of course, who we just lost recently. And there's some more on the side. You can see that pretty well. And again, I paint the grout first and then the actual bricks later. Yeah. And lastly, this is kind of a very different thing, but this was also a club project where we took um, plastic bottles, like recycled uh, juice bottles, 
and I covered them with paper clay and I used, uh, I made some molds out of paper clay, let it dry. And then I pushed the paper clay back, wet paper clay into the dry paper clay to make some molds. And um, well, let's see, let me show you the front first. Whoa, here, where's my camera? I never can find it. And I just lost my bottom. Ooh, that was bad. <laughs> okay, anyway, I'll show it to you without that. So we have um, the bottles are covered with uh, a bit of tin foil, and then the clay paper clay was applied over the top. Did you did you have to glue the paper clay to the foil? Uh, it really wouldn't glue. It's just a matter of it, you know, wrapping it over it, and then when the paper clay shrinks, it kind of tightens everything up. So do you, okay, so you didn't glue the foil onto the bottle? No, I just, just put the foil on the bottle. Mm -hmm. ah. And let's see, there's the windows. It has lights, which are, well, I guess a few of the lights are still there. So you'll see on the back, there's a lot of flowers. Those are made from my paper clay molds. Amazing. Is that one inch? Well, you know, I don't know what scale it is. I made it to house these little uh, little collectible fairies. Let's see, there's one on the top. You can see the little guy shouting. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Sitting on top That's of the egg. Scale. Yeah, so I got those as a gift, and I'm going, what the heck am I going to do with those? So I made this to house them. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a little hard to see, but there you go. Very cool. It kind of matches my shirt, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, does anybody have any questions about using paper clay or anything like that? No, oh, that was great. Thank you. Well, you, you said that you used a stiff brush to make the look like a stucco on your old Mexican hair. Yeah, I, I use a really stiff little brush, like the ones that cost like a dollar or two at the hardware store, and I cut it really short. And brush so that it's, it's the, so that the bristles are super stiff. And then you can just pounce it into the paper clay to give yourself that texture. And that'll catch a certain amount of the paint when you dry brush it or even use a, a, a paint wash on it. Yeah, and what part on that fairy house were, were the bottles? I don't know, we couldn't, I couldn't tell what were the bottles because they're <laughs> the side well, of they're, they're pretty much all juice bottles. Um, the bottom. I don't know. It's, I'm glad you can't tell what they are. <laughs> <laughs> is it where the window is? Right there. There's um oh, over towards down the bottom. Look at the bottom, that side on the right hand side. Each place there's kind of a tower or it goes up. That's the neck of the bottle. That's the neck. Oh, of the bottle. okay. And then it has I put a sunflower on the top. Oh, I like that. That's a nice touch. I like that. <laughs> Good idea. Okay, now I can see them now that it's more. Yeah, let me get back a little bit here. So yeah, okay. Well, yeah. Okay. All right. I'm so you can carve it. that stuff I'll really see the easy. The bottle over here. Uh, and before my bottom fell off, there was another gal in there with a growing more sunflowers. <laughs> <laughs> you well, said that you were making your bricks with a credit card. That's I correct. I don't know. Do a demonstration with that sometime. I can do it right now. It's real fast. Oh, thank oh, you. Dear. I can't wait any longer. I'm going to have to go to bed. I'm sorry, ladies. I'm going to have to love on you. Oh, too. I'm sorry. Thank you so much, Rusty. Rusty. Good night, Rusty. Thank you, Rusty. Good night, Rusty. Good night, Rusty. Good night, Rusty. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks, ladies. Very much. Thank you, ladies. Now. All right. So here we have a credit card. And what is this too? Oh, it's a, your, your key to a wonderful stay. And all I'm <laughs> going to do is I'm going to cut it into like a wedge shape. And what you want is one edge to be the width of your brick and one edge to be the height of your brick. Oh, 
<laughs> about like this. Now, what I typically will do is go back and sand it a little bit so it's not just a, so it's not quite so angular. And you use the big side to determine the width of your bricks and press it right into the paper clay very gently. Don't push down really hard because all you're trying to do is have the, the place between the surface of the brick and where the grout starts. So the place, the thickness of the, the uh, credit card will be the thickness of your grout. So you'll find as you look through your stash of old credit cards, like here's mine, <laughs> um, <laughs> you'll find that some are thicker than others. And if it's still not thick enough, you could put a little piece of uh, masking tape over it too. And then once you get your, your widths done, then you can go back and do the heights. And then you're, it's time for your next row. Hey, so you paper clay it. Time, huh? slightly damp or is it dry well, or what? Well, you want the what I typically do is I'll I'll roll the paper clay out onto you know flat surface on what wherever I'm working, and and I you know I roll it out with a uh, rolling pin, get it the right thickness, and I put um, usually have uh, wax paper underneath it so it's easy to handle, and I'll let it dry for maybe like an hour or two. And just so it has a, a little bit of a dryness to the surface. And then I'll go back with the credit card. And, but you don't have to glue, the, if you were doing vines or something, you wouldn't gl glue the stuff on your building. It would just, uh, you put it on when it's wet. Well, the paper clay has a certain amount of adhesive. This particular kind that I use, which is the creative yeah. paper clay. Yeah, I have that. <laughs> Has, it has some adhesive in it. Now, if you're, if you're doing something like, let's say this project where you've got a whole section of paper clay, what I'll do is I'll take the uh, cardboard, in this case, it was a cardboard box, and I'll smear it with um, something like uh, wood glue, Elmer's wood glue, the yellow glue, make a real thin, uh, film of it, you know, scrape it with your credit card so you don't have a whole lot of glue on there. And then yeah. just lay the paper clay on there. And then you can do the brick there or you can do the brick first and then apply it to the building while yeah. it's still moist enough to be, you know, malleable. Yeah. I haven't ever used it, but I have one. I think it's wonderful stuff. Um, one thing that I do is that I don't know if you have like a, a seal a meal or a food saver. I use that to keep the, the air out of it Whoa, because if any really? air gets to what it is, it'll dry out. Now this has been in this pack for about a year. So, and it's, I can tell that it's still very soft. So you can store it for a while, but you need to make sure that you store it in a, the most airtight container you can. That's a good idea. I never thought of it. Um, what I do with clays, I actually double bag it. Yeah. Put it in a bag, push the air out, and put another bag over that. And the other thing you can do, yeah, and you can, if you wet a paper towel and throw that in there with it, that will help. Yes, I've done that too. Once it gets dry, though, there's no going back. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, any other questions for Diane? I have a question. Can you use paper clay over foam, like the smooth foam, the, the extra damp? I would say yes, yes, you can. Again, I would, I would put, I would coat the foam with a, a bit of glue. Okay. And press it into it, you know, while it's still wet. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Cheryl, are you ready now? Yes, and so I have two boxes on your Zoom screen, except I couldn't find my, my camera box. So <laughs> can you, I'll move my hand. Can, can you guys see my hand moving over some brownish, whitish stuff? No. No, right no. now we see your face. Yeah. Well, it's because my camera can't talk because it would make a, a static. <laughs> so, Marsha, I was wondering if you do see it, you could make it dominant. Cheryl, find her other uh, screen. Uh, 
Do you have another screen on here? Yes. I have two screens. Okay. So for me, it's on the second page, Mark. I found it's it. It's at the very bottom, Cheryl's iPhone. Right. Okay. Oh, no, I, no that's her again. <laughs> uh, on my participants list, it's the very bottom. Go to the participants. Okay. Otherwise, I could just use the one screen. But... No, she can do it. She could do it. I do this all the time. She's just going to um, go to the very bottom of the participants list. Oh. Uh, or at least on mine, it's that's where it is. Yeah. And it says Cheryl's that's iPhone. Like okay. Click, click on the camera and it there, oh, there okay. you go. Okay. Okay. Now that's good because I have to figure out which side's up. Okay, so mine is going to be the egg carton masonry and another way to do it. And so I just wanted to mention at first that I started doing egg carton masonry like bricks and rocks. And so this is the same project that Diane showed, but you can tell Diane is much more artistic than I am. But Oh, get off. <laughs> Um, that's okay. I'm, I'm happy doing what I do, <laughs> but, um, these, these are egg cartons and I would say this is approximately half scale, but again, it was just some cardboard boxes we used and it didn't have scale. And so I also made my chimney that way. And then I thought, well, wait a second. When you do that, you end up with something like this. You end up with an egg carton box that's been cannibalized. And can you do anything with that? And so I like to use things wrong. And so I decided that I would look for a way to use it wrong. And I came across this picture. It's a little blurry, so you're gonna have to use your imagination but here's a young lady who's painting a mural and she's got some depth with a pathway and some rocks up a, a well, a rocky cliff. And so I thought that looks like egg cartons to me. So then I thought, all right, let's, let's give it a try. So with the flat part of the egg carton, I cut some pathway, um, I'll call them steps. And then I gave the steps a little flare. And then I added some depth. Now this is unfinished, so you can see how I did it. You, you saw in the picture that the pathway just kind of curves. There's a delay in the camera, so my words might be faster than my steps. Um, so this, this is just the egg cartons. And then I cut the tips of the egg cartons or the dividers. And I cut some of these other shapes. And then I, I just laid them out. And so if, if you look here, I started at the, the top backs and I, started with the, the longer cliffs. And then by the time I got down here, I wanted some jutting out ones. And so those, the, the ones that jut out are the very top here. And so I strategically cut it so that I could use half of it. Hmm. Or let's say this part. Nice. And so then I just continued down. And um, this is just a piece of mat board. Got it from a frame shop that was closing down. So it was all nicely cut. And then I also used just plain old white glue. And the reason that I recommend white glue, not tacky glue, is because the egg carton is very porous. And so you want some of the moisture to um, wipe, 
the moisture will soak in. So you don't want it all to soak in. So you use white glue and this, I was very careful to make sure there was enough white glue on the edges because they're contoured. So I would put the white glue around the edges and then hold it down, but only for a couple seconds. And, and then just keep on layering. And then after I got all of that done, let's see, I'm just gonna see if there's another picture. Okay, so this picture shows about how many of these stones are for the cliff that I used. And I still have more, I didn't put these at the bottom yet, but I, I can always add more. And then you have two choices. It's still very porous because it's just raw egg carton. And so this, I just put washes on it, but what's gonna happen is the egg carton is like a sponge. And so it gets wet, it turns dark because of the wetness. And so you can't quite see where you are, but that's okay if you're not in a hurry because you can let it dry and then go back and, and do it again. But if you want it to not be porous, then just spray it with a sealer of some sort. You can Mod Podge it, you can just use a, an acrylic spray, polyurethane, whatever, just, just spray it. And then when you do your washes, it won't soak in and you'll be able to see more what you're doing. Of course, the quality of the wash is a little bit different too. So basically that's, that's all I was gonna show you. As we go down here, you can see, I can just add more of my shapes. Oh, I'd wanna have somebody be able to approach my path. Oh, and then what do you use it for? you've got like an outdoor rustic scene. And so you can use it as the back wall of your little scene. So that's, that's my concept in a nutshell. And so do you have any questions? Oh, that's great, thank you. Okay. I have a comment. Okay. You could also just frame it. You could. Yeah, it would be a sculpture for, you know, that you could hang. Right, and maybe you have some, something special that lends itself to an outdoor scene. And so that could go into a shadow box. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you, yeah. Are there any surfaces that the egg cartons won't stick to? It's basically whatever the, the Elmer's glue will stick to. And so sure, a, a slick plastic surface like um, food packaging probably mm -hmm. wouldn't work, but most everything else does. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Lola, you finally made it. That's pretty amazing what you can do with just old grungy egg cartons. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I didn't bring I didn't bring any to show because they're all in storage. But um, I use egg curtains for sidewalks, uh, for bricks, for fireplaces, stones for fireplaces, what have you. And there's different ways you can finish them. You can watercolor them. Uh, like the fireplace stones, I'll watercolor each one a different color because no two stones are exactly the same. Right. <laughs> um, for concrete, I found that just um, pastels, chalk pastels, hmm. that you can scrub a little here, a little there, and then when you spray it, with your spray, your fixative, it'll change the colors. Oh, that's uh, fun. And it, it makes it look like actual concrete. Um, hmm. It's hard finding 
egg cartons that have big enough pieces for sidewalks and for patios. Uh, I suppose you could make them as big as you can, like in real life, it would be 18 inch squares or something like that. Yeah, well, I, I, I tend to go large. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's really a versatile. Um, I just, uh, for making material. Stone, yeah, for making stones in patios or uh, mm -hmm. whatever, I uh, tear the, um, I just tear them up into individual stones and glue them on one at a time. Yes, yeah, I that gives that. a great texture. And there's plenty, they're plenty big enough for that usually. And, and you can also turn your, your paper egg cartons into paper clay. Right. Um, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry, I don't have the recipe. <laughs> Water <laughs> and egg cartons. Well, and Elmer's glue. <laughs> right. I also found that when I started this demonstration, I looked at the egg cartons that we were using in the house and they come in all different colors. So I have this blue one. I don't know if you can see it, but there's mm -hmm. blue, mm -hmm. the regular color. This one happened to have the big lid so I could make a part of a sidewalk. Those are so hard to find. The big ones? The one with the full lid. And the bad thing about the full lid is usually it's got printing in it yeah, on the inside. Quite often. I just hate that. Actually, we have, no, these aren't, we have a farmer's market and they buy blank and egg cartons. But then oh, I found that's wonderful. yellow one. I thought, I wonder if there's a project that involves colorful egg cartons. So I, I kept them, but that was kind of fun. Because I didn't, I didn't pay any attention to the fact that my egg cartons were different colors. Maybe you can use the different colors with like a dragon scene or a fairy scene or gnomes. Wouldn't that be you don't pretty? Have to have regular colored stones. So, <laughs> well, but you could also use your washes on the colors, and that would mute the colors, because some stones have, say, a yellowish cast to them or a bluish cast. Mm -hmm. There's blue stones after all. <laughs> yeah, or the dew, the or what was it, the moss color? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a question here, and I don't remember if it was answered or not. Can you use paper clay over dense foam, which is sometimes called smooth foam? I asked that, Marsha, already. <laughs> I'm not the paper clay queen. Yes, you can. Um, I, I, I know, no, I'm not sh exactly sure. I've, I've used it on all kinds of foam. I mean, the really squishy foam like you'd use to make, I don't know, a pillow. I don't, that would be kind of tricky. <laughs> I mean, you need something with a structural surface to it, but I would think that a stiff foam should be just fine. Like Again, you could coat it really well with glue. <laughs> yeah, it's a styrofoam, not really, yeah. Not a squishy foam, but very dense. Hard to find. Yes, it'll, it will definitely work over styrofoam. Yeah. I wanted to make an offer that people who are looking for egg cartons, the cardboard ones, if you if you send me a, a envelope that it'll fit in, I'll flatten it if I need to or whatever. I'll send you some. Send you one, two, whatever. Because I buy them for my chickens, and I just bought 250 of them. Wow. <laughs> they're not a full. They're not a full lid, okay? But they have, you know. You can but, use. And the I'll size. give you guys. Yeah, and I'll give you guys my email top, address in the chat, and you guys can just email me. Yeah, this. This is the side of a lid, so that's quite a bit of. Well, if you're making bricks, that's like four courses of yeah, bricks. That's, that's a lot of bricks. Yeah. The other thing you can do is you could take your paper, your um, egg cartons and put them in your Cuisinart <laughs> or your blender with water and smash them up and then just pat them down on a screen and then let them dry and you'll have whatever size you need. <laughs> 
<laughs> Another source of um, paper mache um, egg carton like um, is drink carriers. The ones where they put in like the four oh, drinks. Yes. McDonald's. Um, and um, oh, yeah. sometimes those um, or um, uh, paper mache pots like um, from like where they make flower arrangements. Um, some of those pots are um, a little thicker and they're easier to tear apart. And when you tear them apart, you can use that as rocks or tree bark. Um, I've done that before. Hmm. Another source for your paper egg cartons is check with your uh, local feed stores. Some of them care. We have one here where I can get just stacks of them free. They, they keep them for people who raise chickens. Yeah, but they're not free. <laughs> yeah. They are from free. mine. Because I had to go Yours to is nice. buy some, and then everybody started returning them. But now I have a ton of them, but uh, <laughs> I wasn't happy well, I, I had guess, to go buy eggs. I guess the secret is I buy organic uh, chicken scratch for my carrots. And so they think I have chickens. So I get I get my my <laughs> I mean if there's a tractor supply near you, you can buy them for like 50 cents each. And I don't know I I haven't bought from them in a long time because I get them cheaper by my ordering, but they're they're 50 cents a piece and you can they usually have them all the time. And it's back with the chicken stuff. It's with their chicken feed and all that. <laughs> okay, Pat Perry. Uh, no, yes, <laughs> Pat Perry. <laughs> are there you, you sure? are. <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> I'm sure. Okay, I'm not doing anything as magical as these guys. But um, I have been using Darn. Um, <laughs> stencils. I have been using stencils that I bought um, from our last quick minis uh, from Mini Minutia in Edmonton. And these are quarter scale. And she also has them in one inch and half inch as well. Um, and they're really good for quarter inch because you, it's really hard to use paper clay or whatever to do things like that, something this tiny. Yeah. So um, basically I get these and I'll just show you, this was just my first practice. So I just, just to give you an idea of what the, they look like. So there's, there's actually, you know, bricks and there's cobblestones up here and down here wow. is more of a patio, um, a patio How thing. How come so mine three... didn't turn out like that? <laughs> <laughs> that was my first go. So just to give you an idea, and I just painted the board gray. So I'd have a little bit of grout showing through and tried them to see. So basically what you need when you have one of these is you don't want it to move. So the easiest thing to do, or what you need to do is get yourself some uh, repositionable stencil spray. And I have something called Pixie Spray, which I got at the um, scrapbook store. You can also find some at Hobby Lobby called Stencil Ease. And it's $8.99 at, at Hobby Lobby, or if you wanna go on Amazon, it's $10.99. And this is $10.99 on Amazon. And Joanne's has some called Drip Dritz Quilting Spray Adhesive. It's $12.59. But the important thing is you want it to be repositionable because you want to be able to move your, your um, stencil along as you do the spot. So you'd have to do a spot and then likely let it dry and then do another spot and let it dry. So you need to get some of that. And it's if you don't, and you, you so you spray your stencil. So I did my I did my brick, sprayed my stencil really well on the back. I put it down on my piece of whatever I'm using and I used foam core for what I'm gonna show you. And then you really have to press it down. So you have to wait about 15 minutes, press it down super well. So maybe take even a, a credit card or something and really make sure it's all the way, the way pressed. Cause if it's not, you're gonna get your stucco or your spackle underneath it and then you won't get the nice grout line. So we have to do that, really important, press it down really, really well. And then to make your bricks, you're gonna use um, basically 
spackily, and I'm sorry, it's probably backwards. Um, and I'm sorry, it's in French. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's just basic white drywall spackle. So when you're fixing a hole in your wall, you're going to use that. Um, and what I did was I just, like I did on this one, and I'll show you the piece, I just put dark gray. And then I took my spackle and I wanted my, um, my brick to be light gray. So I just mixed a little bit, took a little, mixed a little bit of a gray paint in. And then I put it down with a nice big um, thing. Don't I, use a small, a small one. Use a big one because you're going to get better coverage. If yeah. you use a tiny palette knife, you're going to get stuff underneath it. Trust me, I know. <laughs> oh, good, hey, good. So Zidane. go to the hardware store. They're like a dollar forty-nine, and get one of those suckers, and then just move it along, and just press it in. And it actually is. It's three D. It's quite dimensional when you look at it. It's actually dimensional brick, and it's really, really. It works, turns out really cool. So what I did was I did a, a secondhand store, and I wanted to have. Um, I wanted to have a brick around it so I could put some more items outside. So I did it very dark gray, and I think you can see it here. It's quite dark gray around it. Use some um, granite, what's it called? Granite gray, I mixed it in with a little bit of spackle and I spackle it on so you can still see my grout. Mm -hmm. If I couldn't see my grout and it leaked through, I took a little thin brush and I just repaired my grout. And then what I did is I just dry brushed the, um, I just dry brushed the brick with two different colors of gray to give it some uh, some more depth. And I ended up with what I wanted as far as the patio um, around my secondhand store. So really, really easy to do. So these were bought from Mini Minutia um, in Edmonton, Tina McDonald. And what you get with this is a really super brochure telling you everything you ever want to know about doing stenciling like it's very very thorough and on the front when you get it she also sends you and I can I'll send this to Marsha there's a YouTube video that she does and it's about a 20 minute video on how to use your stencils and she didn't send that with my stencils did really? you get with your stencils I got yeah. it with my stencils you could email Tina and ask her to email it to you yeah. Okay. I want to go back and ask her because it's really, really thorough. It's it's got everything you ever wanted to know about using. If you wanted to use um, grout, sandy grout to do your bricks, or a, def a different one, or as far as same as me, polyfill up, um, she used, and it just goes over everything. It goes over all your troubleshooting stuff and custom customizing them, etc. And then a really, really thorough very well done YouTube that shows you how to use her stencils as well or any stencil as far as making brick. Yeah, I watched the video after you told us about it on Monday and um, it was very helpful. You have yeah. to take the mold up while the stuff is still wet, she said. That's right, and that's exactly it. And if you wanted to do a spot and you wanted to mask a piece of it, so say you were using your stencil here but you didn't want you could put it on and you didn't want this part to be um spackled just put some um tape masking tape underneath your stencil and then spray your stencil and put it on on top and then you'll only get this portion so you can mask off the, the spots that you don't want to be stenciled but it turned out really well like i say it's really dimensional um brick when you see it it actually looks like brick so I'm quite pleased with with that. And they were for my quarter inch ones for the three of them, they were um, I think it was $5 for the three stencils. So pretty inexpensive. And they come in, they come in one inch, and she says one inch is um, four and three quarters by eight and a half inches, um, half inch scale, uh, and the quarter inch covers four and a quarter by four and a quarter, so square, but certainly plenty enough for what you need to do. And I, I'm just really pleased with them. If you want to overlap, you need to let it dry. Right. Always. Yes, I did that for this because I didn't want the brick underneath. So I literally marked out where my, my house was supposed to go on it. And then I did the front and the back and I let them really dry. And then the next day I went 
back and I did the little side areas to yeah. make sure my bricks were going the same way. Looks I really could have done nice. the whole thing, but I didn't want to. I just thought I'll do it this way. So. Can you um, put in the chat the name of where you got that from? The company? Sure, I can put it in. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll get, Thank Marcia, you. you're going to post something in the, um, uh, I think in the notes, all of the things. So I can put the YouTube, I'll send it to Marsha and she can put it all in there as well. Yeah. But, Any, I'll add stuff to the files as people send yeah. it in of what you've done and stuff. I, I just looked at their website and they're taking a break. <laughs> and probably saying they'll holiday. be back, so, but yeah. no indication of when. <laughs> she was really busy so, last yeah. week. She was really busy last week with the quick bitty. So, yeah. yeah. It's miniminutia.com. But she doesn't stay out for long, but she does no, take breaks. No. So she's going to refill her uh, stock. Yeah, she she does good. She does good. Her her YouTube was very very well done, very um, yeah. She did a nice slow pace. You could sit and understand her and actually see what she was doing. And and I really liked that. I thought it was a really good video. So she's back on because she was taking uh, orders uh, earlier this week. Yeah, she comes well. She's like everybody well, else. She goes yeah. in and out. She's not. Yeah, that's right. Be back yeah. on. She she's not on tonight. Maybe, but. They'll be back in a couple of days. Yeah, she's part of the Edmonton Club, so I know she's going to be back very shortly. So any questions on that? Does that make sense? Yeah, that's you. great. Thank you. Just another way of getting it, so getting it, especially for smaller smaller things. I can see using the, the thing, but there's no way I'm going to make brick that size by hand. I'm sorry. There's not <laughs> <laughs> All right. uh, thanks, Jack. Hey. Yes, thank you. Uh, okay, I have Pebble. a question. Yes. What is that stencil made of? Is it made out of like a heavy paper? No, it's mylar plastic. Oh, okay. Okay. Thanks. So yeah, when you wash it, in. once you use it, wash it all off. You can use soap and water on the on the stencil, uh, paint the glue, or a baby wipe will take it off, and it's ready for you to use again. Okay. Thanks. Over and over. Yeah. I found the stencil was pretty um um it was pretty thick and and easy to I, it was not easy to i mean i was really kind of handling it rough because i had to keep punching out my my bricks and that um because they were pulling up off my paper but it did not break the stencil at all so the stencil was sturdy Oh, that's Has anybody a used a vinyl cutter for making bricks? I saw one behind somebody who was in the group. I think it's VG. Also, the the wallpapers, scrapers, they they come wider. I you I have one for wallpaper, and it's it's wider than the one that she had for her stencils. So well, this would one's cover. four inch. So if you're doing quarter inch, that'll do you. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I had, uh, like I said, an old one from wallpaper that's at oh, least... Oh, the big ones. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. So if you're moving bigger scale, that would be good. The bigger, the more, I guess, less strokes you're going to use, the better you are. So. And it would be an, maybe an even pressure all the way. All the way. Yeah, exactly. What do you want to try to avoid shoving it under, you know, into the grout line. So you just want to do as steadily as you can and that works really well but a couple of those I messed up <laughs> and I just took uh, the color of the grout and I just basically took a very fine um, brush and just brushed them back in and then when I went overhead and I dry brushed them it blended right in you can't even see it so it, it's forgiving that way which is nice cool. okay preble and I'm really interested in seeing this okay so I the first thing, I, can, can you see me? We can see this. Uh, have you got two on? Yeah, two two did things I'm showing. Okay, okay. I I see one that's no. a still. So the I can see two. There, okay. one, there you are. Okay, one that has no sound. No, it has sound. The other oh, one. Is, oh, yeah, don't use the one that's my picture. Oh. Can you highlight her, Marcia? 
I trying to figure out which one. <laughs> it's the one with Georgia spelled out. Okay, got it. Go ahead. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is um, eggshells. Okay, and um, the first thing I want to tell you about using eggshells is they're round. Um, the second thing I want to tell you is that for a kind of a natural um, look to um, if you're really trying to simulate stone is paint the eggshell before you break it up. And that way, when you do break it up, it will be, you know, different from stone to stone. Um, on this one right here, um, the this platform is made with foam core, the step. And then of course, that's probably uh, what I, well, this may be matte board. Um, but when I glued it, glued these, um, I'm gonna scoot this in. When I glued these eggshells on, it really ended up being that I was doing one by one. And so it was very tedious. And, and the reason why is because eggshells are round. Um, you can't flatten them out. In order to flatten them out, you just have to, um, you know, get the piece small enough so that it seems like it's flat. Um, and then, then you're, you can, you know, move forward. Now, when I did this particular one, I did not paint it before. So I had to, you know, just touch up with, um, you know, um, my paints on. So I didn't get the kind of look that you would get if you were truly breaking up um, stones um, and a flags, uh, flagstone, I think is what um, this is trying to simulate. Um, so a different version of using the eggshells is this one, a little four season. And what I've done is it's basically the same idea and kind of like what um, Pat was saying is I painted the background um, but another thing about eggshells is that they took color really, really well. And so I may not even painted the background now that I think about it. I pretty much stained it as in I painted it and then wiped it off the eggshells right away. And that left us some color on the eggshells. Um, so that's another way and then touch it up with a little um, paint where I, you know, wanted um, to make it a slightly different um, shade. So that's, that's two um, projects using eggshells. And then similar to what Rusty was talking about earlier, um, using the Kellogg's cardboard um, um, idea I have. This is a different way of <coughs> see the, I used it on both around the base and then also at the edge here um, for my um, patio. Um, I really like doing uh, the cardboard. Um, again, paint it before you um, cut it up. It gives you one look versus another. Um, your edges won't be painted so um, but you can fill that in with grout. Um, and when you use grout, um, I've used a uh, wood filler. I've used the spackle. And um, when, when you do things like that, you wanna smear it on kind of like what um, Pat was doing with the um, stencils and then immediately wipe it away. So that's where um, a spray uh, fixative, or um, other kind of sealer could be put down um, all over the stones before you add your grout um, of any kind. And then, um, and then of course, to get my green uh, little spots, here, let me lift it up. I can't. I don't know if you can see, but there's a little bit of green right there. That's just taking glue and adding that really, really fine um, foam um, to those spots. Uh, you could do it with paint if you wanted. That's another way to do that. Okay, so 
the last thing I want to demonstrate is a deck. So let me move back. Okay, so this is um, just kind of, this is a, uh, um, a cardboard tube that I made to, and then added, um, the, the tree is made with uh, the um, plaster cast cloth. Um, and that's why it has the folds and, and the wrinkles that look like uh, ridges. Uh, if you look really closely right here, you can see the little holes from the cloth. Of course, it's not noticeable unless I point it out to you. Um, but anyway, so this um, tree house, I wanted a deck. Um, and in order to make my deck, I um, it's uneven. So what I did, uh, let me lay it down. I started at one point and I started adding one piece at a time. I know that sounds very tedious, but you know, it, it gives it very unique, um, but you know, just start gluing, but you know, and I literally would hold it up there, put a pencil, mark it, cut it and then glue it on. And then I, I kept going around. So that's how I got my start. Um, and then um, I went from that up to, um, you know, adding um, these kind of pieces, the, 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 I don't know what they're called, but the, I'll call them braces and then a support. Um, the, you kind of have to decide, you know, poke them into, or, you know, the spot you're going to do it and decide on what your angle is um, and, and I just, you know, if I cut it wrong, then I laid that aside and I'd use it later. So, and then at the end, I was, um, I um, added, you know, the end braces um, to get my, look like a spider web sort of thing. And then to do my actual um, decking, um, starting on one side, um, I just cut across and um, I, you know, once I got to the end, I marked again, I marked it and cut it. And because I was using strip wood that's really thin, I was, I was using um, some scissors. Um, I wasn't worrying about it denting the ends, which is typical with scissors, but um, I knew that I could sand that down and uh, uh, work from that. Um, and then as you can see how there's kind of a somewhat of a pattern. I would just do a section at a time and then I would start back at the, the, um, at the house. Um, and then for the, um, uh, I can't think of what it's called, um, the balcony, um, what do you call that? Um, anyway. Miranda balcony? <laughs> no, 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 the, um, the ramp. railing. There railing. you go, railing. Um, I, I, I'm very similar to what I was doing with the rest of it. Um, you know, I just decided, you know, where are my breaks on it and cut them. Uh, and to, to make it, um, you know, just fit. Um, again, I, I bought a lot, I bought a pack of strip wood, several packs. Actually, um, yeah, probably a couple of packs. Uh, it's uh, like Northeast Lumber is a one company you can get it from, but I think I bought the packs. Um, they're like, there's like 20 um, strips in a package. Um, they're shorter than the 24 inch long pieces. They're like um, just 11. So they were kind of easy to, easier to work with. Um, and then once I had it all um, built, uh, that's when I painted it white. And um, the aging look to um, the boards uh, just come from, I didn't like, I only did like one coat um, because I wanted it to look old and not 
I wanted to see that grain of the wood uh, so that, you know, everybody has their, their different taste about what they like. And, and you know, so that's what I chose was um, just one coat um, and uh, try not to go on too thick with the coat so that it would um, sort of raise that grain of the wood, which um, anytime you add wet to wood, um, it is going to raise the grain. And that's why we usually, when we're painting wood, we usually paint it and then sand it and then paint it again. Uh, so if you want it really smooth, that's that's what you, I would recommend. Uh, it's kind of hard to get into this and, and um, you know, uh, sand. So that's another reason why I chose to um, uh, go with more of a weathered look, which wood is outside is going to weather. And so I wanted it to look a little um, more like what it had been there a little while. Okay, so that's, that's my deck. So how did you break up the eggshells? Um, pretty much just, you know, using my fingers. There wasn't any special. Oh, um, one thing is that when you, um, you, you remove an eggshell, you usually have the mem mem membrane intact. Mm -hmm. And I would recommend that you remove the membrane um, once you've painted it, if you're going to do it that way, um, because then the pieces will come apart um, uh, better. Um, you know, if you're trying to keep them on that membrane, um, the membrane wants to be round just like the egg wants to be round. So it, it just made it a little better to break off that membrane. Um, okay. Okay. Do you bake the shells? Well, I, I, they're bo they were boiled eggs. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, because you would want to zap your eggs or something just so they don't smell. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I asked if they should bake them. Or boil them. them. That, that would work. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, I That's literally, said. I boiled eggs and ate the inside of the egg, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and made egg salad or something. <laughs> that actually I'm, sounds good. <laughs> Some kind I made of spray a spray sealer would probably keep them from developing any smell too. Yeah, I, I didn't have, I mean, the, that that project, the uh, potting shed, I've had it for 20 years, um, 15 at least, and there's there's no smell um, from that. Yeah, but you boiled your eggs though, so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But why waste <laughs> an egg? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> No, I wouldn't waste an egg. I mean, not to get it. I made a path from my uh, the back of my house to a little gazebo out of eggshells. And they're probably hard boiled eggs and you peel it off. And I broke them into little pieces about the size of your little fingernail or so and glued that down and then pressed it with a flat... Um, Oh, like your X-Acto knife has a flat bottom on it right. and press that into it. And that broke it into little tiny pieces and yeah. they were all just glued down. And um, the roundness didn't uh, show up that way. Yeah. Well, what I'm do you paint? Flat. What do you paint them with? Anything. Uh, acrylic is what I use. Just acrylic. Okay. Yeah. You, do, you don't water it down or anything? No, um, you could probably use watercolors as well. Um, yeah, yeah, I would I, use a, a wash type coloring on them. Yeah, it depends what on what you're, look, what you're wanting. Um, yeah. Well, I was just thinking that would look a whole lot better in my little potting shed if I could put it in there now <laughs> than what I have. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you have to really do anything to cook your eggs. Um, I throw my eggs on a, a, a pan in my oven and then and then I, I save them and put the eggshells out in my garden in the spring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I, if I get a, a, a pie pan full of eggshells and I put them in, in a bottle or something and I don't notice a smell on them at all and they're not cooked. They're just raw eggshells. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you've cooked them in the oven, right? No, they're just in there to dry, mm -hmm. just to be out of the way. Oh, you don't the have it. turned off. They're, they're just, I just storm there. <laughs> oh. Yeah, if you cook them, they turn brown. <laughs> mm. 
My, my daughter in law <laughs> has chickens that lay blue eggs and green eggs. Yeah, mine ate chickens lay like green eggs. Americana. <laughs> Easter and eggers, too. too. I think she called my Americana Easter doesn't eggers. lay. Yeah, Easter eggers. My my Americanas doesn't don't lay colored eggs like that. But I have frizzles that lay really cream colored eggs. I mean, just light, almost kind of a pinkish tan color. Yeah, it's really a neat. Color. Okay, Shirley. And I only have two of them, so. <laughs> Well, Marsha wanted me to show um, how to make bricks out of uh, fun foam. Uh, you can use the thinner fun foam for like patio bricks, but uh, what I wanted was a brick wall. So it's, it's very simple. You cut your foam into however wide you want it. And this is the, the piece of foam that I have that's un unpainted. No. And I used three colors. I used a light gray, a medium gray, and then it's not black black, it's like charcoal. Um, and, and those are the three colors that I use. So let me, I hate doing this. <laughs> okay, there's stage one. Okay. You cut your, your brick whatever size you want it. The first coat of paint doesn't cover too well. So then you have to cut it, coat it again for a second coat. And once that's dry, then you go over it with just blobbing on uh, the, the light or the medium gray. So it looks blotchy. And then just stipple on the black. Uh, Cause what I wanted was like a, a black granite stone. So th those are the four stages for making your bricks. You know, one coat of paint, second coat, just glob on some medium gray and then stipple on the black. Wow. And these bricks are really nice because they're, they're very lightweight. You can make a big wall with it and it's not gonna weigh a lot. And if you wanna cut them, now I used black, so there's the black edge and I wanted it cut at an angle. So I wanna go around a corner and I'm just laying this here, but when you're gluing it down, you can get it nice and tight and see your black edge doesn't even show. All right. Now are those one inch bricks? I mean, they look pretty big. Um, they're, they're about an inch long by, a, uh, I don't know, quarter inch wide. Pretty much one inch. Something like that. I wanted big, big bricks because what I was making was a uh, pond. Ah, put that over there. And I know you, you guys on Tuesday night have seen this thing a thousand times, but uh, for the new people, this is what I was doing with them. I was making a, a, a brick a koi pond. Around, around my pond. Oh yeah, that came out good. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yeah, and then I followed it all, all, all along on my flower path for the granite stone border. And you can cut these any shape you want. And after you're uh, done, you can see how I went around the corner here to curve it, each line, and just trim it off with the scissors. They cut real easy. And... Uh, yeah, that was, that's my completed garden scene. Cool. And around the back side, let me turn it around here. So I stacked them up so that it doesn't look perfect because the brick, brick wall isn't perfectly in line. So I have some ins and outs on it. So it looks like a, a hand, hand built brick wall. 
And it depends on how much um, black accenting you want on the bricks. Some of them are heavier and some of them aren't so heavy with the black. And some of these on the, on the flower border are, are much lighter. So that, that's it for, for making fun foam stones. Well, that's easy. Yeah. It looks, it looks really easy. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, and, and it really mm -hmm. does look like a, a nice brick stone wall. Would you cut them with, Shirley? Scissors. Scissors? Yep. Did I had you trouble make, cutting fun foam. <laughs> did you make the bird, Shirley? No. No, it was something that I bought. Yeah, what I do, I start out with a strip of foam like this. I measure it how wide I want it. And then I just come along and cut little bricks all the way down till I have a pile of bricks. And then when you're painting them, what I like to do is take a strip of um, masking tape. And like if this is my masking tape, I fold one edge over and then the other edge over. So it's much narrower. So you got two sided tape. Put this on your, your surface that you're going to be painting on and then the bricks won't move. Thank you. Okay. So, um, yeah, with black, with the gray stones, it doesn't show in between um, where I've cut them. So I would suggest using a, a black foam for a color like this. Um, if you're using a, a, a lighter, uh, lighter stone, get a color that's gonna kind of coordinate with it. Um, so you would prefer not to cut it first, but to, before you paint it, is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, go ahead and paint all your bricks. And then when you're okay. making the curve, on, you know, like on, on my pond here, I just, I would take a, a brick and to make that curve, put mm -hmm. it down, cut an angle. Okay, there you go, Marsha. Let me point to them. So these two have a, a curve to it. So cut one angling toward narrower at the back, wider at the front and then take the one next to it, whoops, wrong way, <laughs> that one, <laughs> and do the same thing and cut less because you can always cut more off and fit them, dry fit them till you get the right angle, right, right curve, and then just glue it down. Interesting, yeah. Hmm. Okay, any other questions for Shirley? That was cool. Okay, I have one little rock wall here. If you can see that. Oh, nice. Oh. Piles and rocks. Nice. And um, it's on pegs, so it fits down in the side of the. Hold it up, yeah. Yeah, I was putting it in the pegs, but anyway, <laughs> they're not here. Um, just sand glued to the bottom. And then the shells and, and rocks and stuff glued on top. And of course, you can sort rocks to, and shells to have smaller sizes or bigger sizes or whatever. But they're real, walk, real rocks from the beach. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone have any of these things to show? Paper clay, fun foam, egg carton. I can show another one made from builder foam. Okay. Anybody familiar with builder foam? Yeah. Yes. This product here, you know, the Owens corn. <laughs> Literally, you get it in different thicknesses. It's insulation foam is what it is. I think Preble is. <laughs> Pardon? So I think Preble is probably familiar with it. So this is a work in progress. So let me get it off the floor. I just took it down as we were talking. Lines of those are apart. This is a castle Ooh. that's being built from it. Nice. So oh, all wow. the stones were carved from that 
pink. You can see the pink on the top there from the foam. And then it was painted with a combination of paint with sand in it. So this is literally still a work in progress. Um, you still see like bits of the pink here because I had to put the uh, coins, is it on? That come up the top of it. But um, you say it's an entire room box with a tower in it. That's done in the, uh, in the pink builder foam. That's wonderful. You put sand in the paint. Put sand in the paint. Uh, same sand that you use in um, sandboxes for kids. Really? So that would make it look like a sandstone, like the Southwest houses. Yeah. Hmm. So, like I say, it's literally, there's still, um, I use T-pins here. This is all just pinned together, all the walls are right now, because it's still a work in progress. That's your mock-up. Pardon? Are you able to show them the inside? Well, the inside is not completed by no means, but I can turn it Where's around. Me, <laughs> Sorry, I always put her on the phone. She always gets me, doesn't she? <laughs> I think she tries. I'm afraid I'm going to knock a pin out of here. <laughs> oh, wow. That's wonderful. So there's me now. The wall that's falling forward because it's just propped up. So I, I built a wooden wall. Now, is that right. one inch scale? This is one inch scale. This is actually going to be a part of the, uh, the structure that holds up the tower there. I'll take that out of there. You can see it there. The wall keeps falling cool. forward. Wow, that is great. Gosh. I even carved, if you can see the floor. Oops. Whoops. <laughs> I carved wooden, um, everything's tipping over. I carved a wooden uh, plank floor, which oh the person God. who um, who uh, hosted the um, the workshop was very against me doing wood because for that time period it should have been um, oh, stone floor. But I just wanted yeah. a wooden floor. <laughs> Say it was a modern castle that's been redone. <laughs> right. <laughs> and you can see the staircase going up there inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So everything in it is done from um, phone. Wow. Wanda, you're going to have to show that on Tuesday night when um, Julia is here. Who? Julia. She, she, you know, she's on her way to Disneyland or something. Oh, oh Julia. Julia, yeah. Oh, anyway, I, I, I didn't wasn't prepared there because I just thought we were talking about exterior um, uh, walkways. So I, but. So I realized we were talking about stone walls. I thought of that. Yeah, that's cool. Was that yeah. a mini ha ha project? Yes, it was. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else got any? I got one. Okay. I got one. Um, I'm not finished with it because real life seems to get in the way. But <laughs> I got these. It's um, it's a uh, flagstone. Oh, yeah. Bloodstones um, by Sue Cook. And let me just throw that in there. And what I like, I, it's one inch scale, but they are real flagstones. Oh, wow. And, wow. In, and be behind it, it actually has um, like a webbing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And you can actually cut them and actually in the back there's actually this template that you could actually um make it bigger and match the the template to interlock them or what i've done is i've actually um cut what i needed because what i needed was a lot narrow it's more like a two and a half to three inch strip so I started cutting mine and making my own interlinking. And then there's this mortar that is already pre-made. So I'm using this dark gray. And what I'm doing with the ones that I'm working on, it's not, it's still in pieces, so I couldn't lift it. But I purchased 
spray paint. That is the stone look. Mm. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to spray paint each of the flagstone that way. Then I'm going to seal it and then put them back together where I need it around the building and then using the grout to keep it. Yeah, that'll be cool. That's nice. Could, yes. Could you, could you bring nice. it back? Bring it back next month to the meeting so we can see your progress. Yes, I'm hoping to get it done by next month. I, I, have, I have five year old. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, that's um, kind of where I, where I'm at. The nice thing about each of the flagstone is I was able to cut it with an exacto knife, and I was able to sand it wow. to get the pieces to fit where I need it. Uh-huh. Well, even a portion of the flagstones done would be good. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, anyone else? I yeah, some... I do. I'm um wait a minute, let me turn. I heard if you turn off your video that it helps your signal. So and I've been having trouble with my internet. So that's okay. I'm not in I'm not in I was generally landscaping and the only thing I have is um I don't even know if you'll be able to see it because it's sort of solid. If you look at it all the sides, I'm putting this black thing so you can okay. So what it is is it's called Woodland Waterfall. And um I like birds. I had purchased a lot of birds. I had went to a class um, when Toledo used to have their summer in the garden. And Tony Hansi, it was supposed to be a wishing well. And I, I didn't need a wishing well. So eventually I made this um, garden as woodland scene with all the birds. And there's a stream. And this is working out well basically it's made on a foam core kind of base to start covered with clay and then on top of the clay you put um in your rocks and your stuff and then there my waterfall comes out from this side where i'm waving my fingers okay. and it's it's an artesian Ring. It has a hawk on top oh, of it. Nice. Yeah. It flows really down the rock and then the stream goes off okay. to the other side. So, with the cattails, are I've got two kinds of ducks, of course, the heron, and there's a bunch of oh. other, there's a little woodpecker in the front there. And um, there's frog, and um, over here on the back, the hawk is looking over. He's standing on top of the rock and down at uh -huh. the base of the rock around the corner. Am I getting to the right place yet? It's kind of hard to see and you probably won't be able to, but it's sort of like the ancestor of the dinosaurs of the birds. There's a little dinosaur. There's a lot of glare. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of glare. I try not to shine it up, but so that that's um, I call it woodland waterfall and I, it was really fun doing the resin. I enjoyed that. I did it at work because it was old-fashioned resin that stinks. <laughs> I did this a lot of years ago. So I do a layer, and um, by the time it, everybody came in the next day, the smell was gone. And so then the next night, I do another layer. So if you could see it close enough, you'd see I use little glass um, balls and stuff to make the top of the artesian place more bubbly. And then it comes down the side. So there's some saran wrap that brought the water down into the, and then um, the bottom underneath the stream, I didn't paint it. I kind of went with the sand and the different layers of dirt and then some greenery and stuff. So it was just, um, that, that's about the only landscaping kind of thing I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought Very my clever. first time coming and I thought everybody was showing landscaping stuff. I really enjoyed seeing all the techniques. Yes. Oh yeah. Yes. So what else? 
I have some uh, EVA foam brick. Oh okay. yeah. What's, Let me what's get... EVA foam? Uh, it's that craft foam that you get at like Dollar Tree or any craft store that little kids would cut up. So oh, it's like that foam. Or... Fun it's, foam? Not, it's the same stuff the gym mats are made of, but this particular one is a little thinner. Oh. Okay. Let me let me get that picture here so I can post it in the in the chat. Oh shush, doggo. <laughs> he's he's having a day today. Come on, where is it? It's right above this. This was for a coffee shop that I've kind of put on on hold for the moment. But I, I like the way it works. With, come on, I just want to save the image. How about I just snip it? Sorry, guys. Thought I thought, that, thought I was ready. Gotta come to class prepared. <laughs> I think all the projects have been very good today. Been really yes, fun. they've yeah. been very informative. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's save that. Yeah. Desktop capture. And thank you to all the presenters and the rest of them too. What was that, Ruth? Oh, that's cool. Wait, what was that? Ruth. It says Ruth. Ruth's iPad. Ruth, are you there? I got my picture put up correctly. Okay, go ahead, Melanie. It's, it's, in, the, it's in the chat. Oh, it's in the chat. Oh, I see. We can't see a picture in the chat. Oh. Yes, you can. You click on it and it'll show up. It's a brick uh, wall okay. kind of thing. It just shows a whole bunch of our files. Well, yeah. I'm files too. Click on it. I could probably yes. share my screen. Also, yeah, let me see if I can do that. It says capture, and I opened uh, one of them. Anyway, is there more than one? Let's try this. No, there's about 20 of them. Okay, there. Oh, I only see one. Oh, oh there. Yeah. Oh. And yeah. what's that made out of? EVA foam. The way I do it is I use a vinyl cutter like a Cricut to to etch it, hit it with a heat gun, and then, then paint it. Oh. Oh. It's different. Oh, nice. It's a technique that's used a lot in um, costume construction. Oh. Well, I'm not real versed on costume construction. <laughs> <laughs> What yeah, did just, you use to print it with? You said was it is just, it vinyl? Uh, it's um it's it's EVA foam, ethyl vinyl acetate. EVA foam. Okay. Yeah, um, usually prime with white glue, and then just just acrylic paints. Hmm. So you work with a lot of fabric, right? Uh, some I, I do sew, but I, I use a lot of polystyrene too. Or furniture builds and things. I just never heard it called that. It's, it's the Anyways, same stuff as I don't know content. the composition of things. <laughs> it's the same so. same foam that you see in gym mats. It's just a thinner sheet. Yeah. <laughs> so do you have some of it handy there? Actually, I might. Hang on. Let me go grab the, the roll. <laughs> Cheryl, is that your bird or is it Shirley's? <laughs> um, it could be mine. <laughs> 
<laughs> is it a little bird sound? It's not, I don't hear no, the big it one. It's not real little, but. Oh, no, it's it's my African gray BB. He's whistling. Oh. He's not, the one that screams all the time, he actually went to my son's Tuesday night. They were going to take my two big ones, but didn't have room with my granddaughters and the kittens that they were picking up and <laughs> <laughs> everything else they had to take with them, you know. <laughs> if they're not screaming, I don't even hear them sometimes. Yeah, right. <laughs> there, oh, yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's BB. He's, he's making noise. I say he, I have no idea what sexy is, but I call him a he. <laughs> it's a bird. Yeah. He's a neat bird. He really is. I can't find the roll because we just moved and nothing is where it's supposed to be. But this okay. is what the what the thicker stuff looks like. This is like six mil. But if you go to Dollar Tree and go to the craft section where they have like kids craft foam, same stuff. Oh. Okay. So one, one millimeter sheets are slightly thinner. So is it fairly stiff? It actually bends pretty well. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would use this for cosplay armor. So is it like armor. the fun foam then? Is it like the fun foam? I've seen it marketed under that brand. Okay. It's okay. Like, um, yeah, that's what we're, that's the consistency we're talking about. Uh, that's what I thought. It looks like um, cushion foam, but thinner. It doesn't have the, the same kind of air bubbles, though, no. as, as cushion foam would. You might use this on a supportive layer, but it, it's a gym mat, basically, is what it is. Or, or camping mat, if it's you've ever gone camping. It's more like fun foam only. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's way more like fun foam. A lot of cosplayers make armor out of it because it's light and bendable. Any other Ooh. questions or comments or, or projects to show? I know. I, I have one. Okay. Aww. <laughs> um, what I I don't know. I've collected over the years, and it's going to be a little hard to show, but I'm going to give it a try. Um, let's see. Where am I? Right in front of us. <laughs> I'm trying to get the right angle so Up it a little higher. Yeah, I have oops. little rocks that oh, I've collected yeah. from different train stores. And if I didn't feel like that, up higher, up higher. Because it was easier for me to buy them than to try to make them. Yeah. <laughs> One more. I go pick them up on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> that, um, Especially when they just chip steal a, a road. <laughs> Stop yeah. on the edges and you get the little rocks out of there. <laughs> and, well, and you can go to the aquarium store and those rocks are pretty cute. Yeah, I yeah. have that that one and then I have like um oh I know I had it here for a second. It, these are called just you know, you can see it, it's called uh red rock. Okay, yeah. But they're oh, yeah. they're a lot bigger. Mm -hmm. But you could use them to make walls if you wanted to, or pathways, or looks like sandstone. We have a lot of red sandstone in Colorado. Yeah, that's where we so get the name from. <laughs> sometimes in um, uh, where is it? Uh, construction sites, they've got stuff they're getting rid of that you can, we can pick up on. A lot of the the I've gotten some very fine sand from the aquarium stores to make uh, the bottoms of aquariums. Okay. Fun, just something different. Yeah, very fun. Well, I'm only 60 miles from the beach, so that's where I go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that far from the beach, but sometimes between the people, beer bottles and oh, yeah. other stuff. No, you can't get any more landlocked than I am. <laughs> Literally the middle of the country. <laughs> there's, there's been a very interesting uh, conversation or chat on um, quarter connection this week about dirt. Oh. And 
um, Kevin gave some very interesting um, insights into how to use just dirt out of your yard. Mm -hmm. And well, for one thing, he, he tells you to cook it, you know, in your microwave or in your oven. Oh, okay. And then strain it to get the, the fineness that you want. But then he says, when you put it down, spray it with bleach or is it alcohol? Alcohol. 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 He says you spray it with alcohol and that that breaks it down to where it will accept other liquids. And then you spray it with a mixture of watered down glue. And what else, Marcia? I can't remember. I, I got the his instructions buried here someplace. Oh, Jeff and Williams with and I are gonna with, be talking with, about this and see if maybe with we- a, With a drop of to... soap in it. Yeah. Yeah, with a drop of soap. Um, they're, they're all techniques used by uh, railroaders. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you get a chance, look that conversation up because it's really quite interesting. The um, things you can do with the dirt out of your yard. Well, there's somebody that's going to be doing something June 11, and I don't know for sure what or Where? Jackie, Jackie and I are going to talk about it. Yeah, I think there's another railroader that's going to, to yeah. uh, to give his information and you know they've been doing this stuff for years and years and it's a great place for us to learn um landscaping especially uh railroading landscaping is just phenomenal yeah, yeah phenomenal is a good word okay anyone else okay i guess that's it i um, Thank you, everybody, for coming and for sharing. This has been yes. terrific. Yeah, it's been a good one. Great yes. sharing. Yes, very good one. Okay. I will stop the recording.